So there. Ah, I can't send that. Delete, delete, delete. Oh, hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about forgiveness while we take a look at the story of someone who found a higher perspective. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about forgiveness, which is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. Spoiler alert, there is money in today's story. A handful of pennies is not really a lot of money. That's what you think. These pennies could buy a lot in 1950. That's what I thought. In 1950, a loaf of bread cost 12 cents, a comic book cost 10 cents, and a candy bar cost five cents. It takes a lot more pennies to buy a candy bar now, Zeke. Yeah, but it only takes one penny for me to amaze you. Really? Oh yeah, I shall now make this penny disappear just by rubbing it. Mm-hmm. Observe. <laughs> See? You Gone. just made all those pennies fall off the table. You have no sense of mystery. Ah, but I do. I know how to amaze you with this penny. How so? I can make all this dirty tarnish disappear in a single step. You're on. Then, let's, let's do, do it. it. Step one, find a really dark, dirty penny and place it in a dish. Done. Step two, take out your super secret cleaning agent. Hot sauce? Yep, any kind will do. Squeeze some hot sauce on the penny and then rub it around. What now? Wait 10 minutes. Step three, rub the penny with your fingers and then rinse it with water. See? Ta-da! That is so cool. I can't believe it's the same penny. I know, right? Copper becomes dirty or tarnished when oxygen in the air reacts with the copper to form copper oxide. Hot sauce has vinegar, which contains acetic acid and salt, or sodium chloride. Both help to break the copper oxide free from the penny. Double whammy. The hot sauce wipes the dirt away like it was never there. You know, my mom has this giant copper tub that's extremely tarnished. You think the hot sauce would work on it? I mean, there is only one way to find out. Ready? Ready. You know, I wonder how this tastes. I don't think you want to taste that, Zeke. Oh, is that a dare? It's a double dare. Okay. Oh, that's not half bad. Oh. Oh, <laughs> oh that, that's hot. Oh, oh, that's hot. Oh, whoa. Oh, that's really hot. <laughs> Zeke, I would love oh. some help. Give me a moment. Uh. <laughs> moment of truth? Moment of truth. It looks so different. It's completely changing it. Speaking of which, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in Luke, the third book in the New Testament. But before Luke, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationships. So at the right time, God made a teeny tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds of people pressed in around him. Religious leaders, everyday people, even Roman soldiers, and people who were considered outcasts. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. One day, Jesus and his followers passed through the city of Jericho on their way to Jerusalem. 
As usual, a huge crowd gathered. They pressed in from all sides along the road, hoping to see Jesus, to, to touch him, to, to be healed. But one man was stuck on the edge of the crowd, a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Now, we know three things about Zacchaeus. He had a really hard to spell name, he had a lot of money, and he was super short, which meant he was basically getting run over by this crowd. Now, okay, you've got to understand about tax collectors, nobody liked them. And to be honest, it was for a good reason. Tax collectors were Jewish people who worked for the Roman government that was ruling over them. So it was like they were working for the enemy. And to make it worse, tax collectors got paid by demanding extra money for themselves. So Zacchaeus had gotten rich by taking money from his neighbors. In spite of all this, Zacchaeus really wanted a chance to see Jesus. Maybe he'd even heard that one of Jesus' own disciples, Matthew, had been a tax collector. Uh, please, could I get through? But no one wanted to give way to the man who had taken their money. Finally, Zacchaeus looked ahead and saw a sycamore tree right at the edge of the road. That's it. Zacchaeus raced ahead to that tree and climbed right up to a sturdy branch that reached out over the road. <laughs> Best seat in the house. The crowd drew closer and closer until Jesus was right below Zacchaeus. There's just something about him. At that very moment, Jesus looked up. Zacchaeus could feel his heart racing. He could tell that somehow Jesus knew everything about him, all the wrong things he had done, all the lies he had told, and the money he had stolen. Zacchaeus, come down at once. I must stay at your house today. What? <laughs> Jesus could have been annoyed with Zacchaeus or called him out in front of everyone for the wrong thing Zacchaeus had done. But instead, Jesus invited himself over to have dinner with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus' heart filled with joy as he rushed ahead to prepare his home for Jesus. Jesus, come in! Lots of people had followed. They couldn't believe that Jesus would choose to hang out with somebody who had done so many wrong things. Jesus has gone to be the guest of that sinner! Zacchaeus was filled with gratitude. Jesus loved him and had chosen to forgive him and Zacchaeus knew he couldn't keep on living his old life. Look, Lord, here and now, I give half of what I own to those who are poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay it back. I will pay back four times the amount I took. Today, salvation has come to your house. The Son of Man came to look for the lost and save them. In a single day, Zacchaeus went from outcast to beloved follower of Jesus. His entire life was changed from the inside out. The end. Wow, that's amazing. So Zacchaeus promised to give away half of what he had, plus four times the amount that he cheated out of anyone. That might have been everything he owned. But it didn't matter because Jesus. Jesus had forgiven Zacchaeus completely, even before he asked. So what's our part in the story? Well, forgiveness can change people, starting with you. When you ask God to forgive you of the wrong things you've done, it frees you from carrying around a load of guilt and fear. It, it frees you to love God and love others. And when you choose to forgive those who have wronged you, it can change them too. Like maybe your little brother borrows your video game without asking and messes it up. You could yell at him, get in a big argument, and stay mad for days. Or you could choose to forgive your brother. Then you don't have to carry that anger. Plus, it could change your brother's heart, too, and make a way for you to be friends. Forgiving someone does not always mean that they will change, but it opens the door for them to live differently. Like Zacchaeus. Exactly. Sharing God's forgiveness with others is a pretty incredible gift. It sure is. See you next time. So here's the thing. When you forgive others, it can change them. And hot sauce. Hot sauce can change things, too. Mmm, now you make if you want some hot sauce. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you next, next time. time.